down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors. Experience revealed with the Savvy Landlord as your host. What's going on, Savvy Investors? Yep, yep. Boom, boom. This is your friend, Steve Van Kallenberg. Just chilling, getting it done, maybe getting it done. But in my mind, I was like, I got a lot to do, and it's the fourth quarter. And so today's episode is in the trenches, the real deal, holy field, getting it done or trying to get it done. But here's the things that I've recently learned that I can get on and pass on to you. Number four, hey, if you didn't know, uh, quarters, you know, first three months, second three months, you know, you should do review, third quarter, but fourth quarter, man, this is it. 2019, we're at the end of the road. Are you happy? Are you where you should be? Is your pocketbook filled or are you just down in the dumps? Tell me where you're at so I can help you out. But I have been up and down like a roller coaster ride. And I would say it's positive because reflection, realization of who you are, what you're doing, where you're going, I think are the critical mass of the growth that you're about to receive. And so I'm looking forward to 2020. I hit some of my goals for 2019. Pretty stoked about that. Can't wait to share that on an episode pretty soon. Got my weight on Locky Lock in a couple of weeks running a marathon. Oh, no. I'm talking about the full daddy. So pray for your boy. December 15th, I'll be in Dallas. If you're around that area, <laughs> I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm doing, but I made this goal. And it keeps popping up in my mind all the time. You know, when I was 18 years old, fooling around in college or trying to do college or what is college, trying to find out who I am. I'm a late bloomer. And I remember this uh, conversation that I had with some people back when I was 18. So it was crazy. 30 something years ago, or actually a little less than that, but 30 years ago, roughly. And you don't want to be 50 and have regrets. Man, I mean, I just. You know, when I flippantly said that about 18 years old, I don't want to have regrets. I'm going to do all that I can do, man. When you're 46, that's my number right now. I'm 46 years old, man. What regrets do I have? You don't want to have regrets. You don't, you don't want to have a booty body uh, out of shape. You don't, you don't want to have divorce, dysfunctional uh, relationship with your spouse. And for sure, you don't want your kids to alienate or even know who you are because you're doing something else. So you got to redo some reflection. I know that's deep for somebody. I don't even know why I said that, but I can tell you right now I'm in the trenches. I'm coming out, coming out swinging. 2020 is going to be off the chain. I can't wait. 2019 didn't reach all my goals as well. I wanted to, but, but here I am right now in the trenches. Number one, man, I'm learning this real quick. Put it on paper. I used to say that all the time to people and I'm like, dude, it has a great business plan, is not on paper? You know, I got this vision, I got this dream for this company called Savvy Investors. Oh, it sounds great. I even hired somebody this year for 2019, thought I was somebody even double special. And then the dude asks me questions all the time. He's like, what's this, what's that? I'm like, man, I, didn't, I need to put it on paper. I said, you know, in my mind, I go, it's not only your vision, but it's your plan. And you gotta put the steps into place. I remember I hired my general manager who's sophisticated, who came from an amazing background. And she, the first week she got here, she started building a PowerPoint. And I remember vividly a young, uneducated 40 year old back then. And I was like, we're 39. I don't know how old I was. I was like, man, that's dumb. Why would you spend all this time building a PowerPoint of the organizational structure? We should be out making sales. We should be making money, getting a return on an investment. And then I realize now, 40 something years later, well, actually six years later, that's what I'm doing right now. And I ran into a dude the other day and he's like, that's what I do all day is plan and prepare. And I'm like, well, I'm an executor, but you got to plan and prepare. That's where you're at. You need to put it on paper, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's the end of the year. You maybe your goals and dreams. It's just so it's easy. But what you got to do is like, you got to put your business plan on paper. It doesn't need to be so formal where you got to have scraps and, you know, uh, estimations and blah, da, 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 da. No, what you need to do is what's your dream, what's your goal, 
What's your plan? What kind of money do you want to make? Where's it going to go? And steps on how you're going to reach them. It's so cool because I've been doing it. I've been, I don't know why I have been neglecting this for years, but when I started writing down the hard questions, what's the revenue? Where are you going to gain the revenue? How, what money is it going to take to get the ball rolling? It just reveals so much about myself and what my goals are and what I'm trying to do. So number one, put it on paper. Number two, it's okay to change lanes. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying right there is it's okay to put a book down and pick up a new book. It's okay to revisit the Millionaire Fast Lane book. If you have not read that, MJ DeMarco, I'm in it. I'm getting in it deep. I'm changing lanes from DJ to bridal to real estate to commercial to entrepreneur and all of the above. What you're doing now may not be the ultimate thing that you should be doing for the rest of your life. It may be hurting you. For example, let me just give you some idea. So years ago, you know, if you wanted to scale your business, you would add on a person, like a whole human being. And, you know, the government, they like to charge you workman's comp. The government likes to charge you Social Security tax. There's a lot of expenses that goes on in hiring another individual. But what if you hired, not hired, what if you broke into a new market, you would try to hire a salesperson to bring it up, but you can do all this through sales and marketing online through Facebook ads. You can, you can step, you know, there's this huge movement that's been going on for the last three years of virtual wholesalers. Yep. They're going, I mean, there's people that have do 10, 20, 30 transactions a month and never go to the closing table and not even in that state. How's that possible? So you, the, what you think you were doing before that lane you're in, I, I would definitely consider looking over your shoulder and changing lanes. Changing lanes could mean not the same industry that you're in anymore. Maybe you should look into a new industry, you know, changing lanes, maybe from single family to commercial or from commercial into office space or completely out of real estate altogether. What's deep inside of you? What lane do you want to change? And you can kind of go half in and half out. And if you're going to change lanes, that leads me to number three, ask for help. Seriously. I'm, 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 I, I've, I've heard that several people, they don't ask for help and they're just on an Island somewhere choking out, crying, wondering why things ain't going well is because you're not asking for help. It's seriously, it's in the Bible. Ask and you shall receive. And I used to be a hypocrite in this area. And I just recently just emailed, uh, I'm in the middle of a transaction right now. And I just reached out to some key people. I'm like, I need help with deciphering what's my next play. Should I go all creative? Should I wait it out? What should I do on this transaction? How should I do it? Is this the best use of my time? And sometimes when you ask for help, you'd be presently surprised. Someone will give you some feedback that you will learn. And I'll mention that here in a minute. Some feedback that I heard back and that I did never even thought about. For example, I'm building a business right now and I'm putting it in place. Of course, I got it on paper. Of course, I'm building this crazy spread, uh, not spreadsheet, but presentation. And then uh, a young superstar entrepreneur said, dude, once you build it like a startup. And I'm like, ding dong, it is a startup. He's like, no, what I mean is why don't you get partners that have equity in it, maybe economically or just sweat equity and to help you build it better. And I was like, man, that's, that's the power of asking for help. And that's my homeboy that I just reached out and asked for help. I just asked him, what, what's your take on this? You know, what, what do you what should I be doing? What could I be doing? And you know, if I didn't ask for help, so listen, the position that you're in right now is because you allowed yourself to be in that position. First, you got to take responsibility and say, Hey, you know, it's not working. How can I change my lane? You might need a new car. You might need a new vehicle. You might need a new friend. You might need better gas. You might need a tune up. Think about it but ask for help and just get the insight. Number four, before you ask for help, no, 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 no. Ask for help and see what corresponds, but be prepared to write out your concerns that you need help with. And so that's what I did yesterday. I just sat down. I'm, I'm at the pivotal point of this transaction 
and I don't want to give up. I have so much invested. And what should I do? What's the direction should I go? So I just started writing it out. I started reanalyzing the deal. This is the cash flow. These are the pictures. I looked at the pictures. My heart dropped a little bit. And I was like, hmm. Then I'm looking at my time. Then I'm looking at GC in it. How much equity do I gain? How much cash do I put in it? And then I just put it out on paper. And I wrote it down. And I wrote out my concerns. And then I just emailed it to some few friends. And you got to be sensitive of their time. You got when you're going to write this out, get bullet points, get it to the to the point, and and ask the question, and then just sit back and see how they respond. That's number four. So write out your concerns. So yes, number three. So let's re- revisit one. Put everything on paper: your vision, your dream, whatever, and then start making steps towards that. For example, if I put my my vision on there, this is why I want savvy to be. And then the second slide would be, you know, what my revenue and how I would reach that revenue Two, think about changing lanes and you know, a product or service that was working before, maybe it was your CRM. Maybe it's click funnels is not working anymore. Maybe lead pages is whack. There's so many new services that are coming out daily. Keep on the lookout. Excuse me. I'm burping over here. Check out product hunt.com or yeah, product hunt.com and just type in a keyword that you're looking for and you'd be presently surprised um, what you might be considering. And number three, ask for help. And then you really need to get in the habit of that. Number four, write your concerns down after you kind of ask for the help and set up a time. And number five, yep. Steve Van Kallenberg, Van Kallenberg does get smashed. I got smashed in Ohio and not in a negative way, but I didn't really make any sales. It's very crazy. A couple of years ago, I was like some su- superstar speaker and a lot of people bought my services and, I, and my products and my courses. And, and I was like, okay, great. And then Vina asked me back to speak and I'm like, all right. So I spent 60 hours building a whole new eight hour class, which is pretty crazy. And I didn't yield anything and I was kind of bummed about it. And then some great people in my world that I don't even know, some random dude I was chatting with and he was like, what are you selling? And I was like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> what am I selling, Van Kalenberg? I did not have a clear path for people to follow or to make a sale. Man, that was pivotal for me. You got to give people a clear path to follow you. What do you want people to do? I want you to loan me money. That's a clear path. How do you communicate that in a sensitive, respectful, or in a marketing way? I want to buy your house. Make it a clear path that there's no, you know, confusion. What I found is that when someone there's confusion, the confused mind says no, and they walk away. If you're presenting an offer, make it clear. What if you're a wholesaler out there? What's the ROI, ARV, minus the repairs, minus the acquisition cost. There's a margin of blank return on investment. Make it clear to what you're trying to do. Number six, I can't take uh, credit for this. I mean, I'm hanging out with some super duper entrepreneurs and one of those super duper entrepreneurs, they were on the radio show, Ethan Blagg, B-L-A-G-G. You should listen to his podcast he has on there. He's an amazing entrepreneur, and he said this thing to me, you need to leverage more. I was like, buddy, I am the master at leverage. See, this is my arrogance and my pride comes in. (laughs) And then he calmly looked at me and slowly just said these three things. And I was like, I'm not leveraging people properly. I understand how to leverage financial and technology. So it's really easy to leverage people, right? I mean, it's really easy to leverage money, right? You go borrow, you put, you buy a hundred thousand dollar house. You might have to put ten thousand dollars down. In my case, no money down, or whatever the case might be. Use, use another asset as a leverage, and you can acquire more average, uh, more assets with leveraging ten thousand could yield up to a hundred thousand, right? I mean, we all know that in real estate investing, the power of leverage, and then OPM, other people's money, the power of leverage, O. PT, other people's time. Ah, I need to scale 
with other people. And that's where I'm at right now. How could I scale with other people? How could I partner with other people? What would it would look like if I had just one person doing acquisitions for me? What would it look like if I had someone just prospecting private money for me? You know, I leverage VAs to the hilt, but what if I partnered with people and taught them how to do things and leverage deals? Hmm. So leverage people, leverage financial, and the final, leverage technology. Bam. That's that's OG Van Calm. That's tattooed on me. Use the software. And so all these years, I know I'm confessing right now. It's like a... <laughs> I don't have a CRM until just recently. Uh, my new staff, cat. he's like, we need a CRM. We don't got to get organized. He's a high C and I'm not a C. I'm a dummy D sometimes. And he's like, we need to get, I mean, I was thinking all the re all the people that are in my network. I don't even have it organized. I couldn't even send an email out today. And that's why I miss a lot of people. A lot of people email man, Why you didn't tell me about that class? I would have came to that class. Cause I don't have it organized cause I'm not leveraging technology. Booby, 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 get it done. And he said, my friend Ethan was like, you know, you can reproduce simple tasks over and over again. And so some of you wholesalers, that could be, what, what could it be? Pause. Think about it. Tracing people, finding people, submitting offers, direct mail could be all automated through technology. And number seven, a really good friend of mine, she brought this to my attention. She's like, Stephen, sometimes you have expectations in your mind and you beat yourself up over those expectations because they failed, but they really weren't quantified or written down or understood or even possible. Hmm. It was very powerful. You know, what expectations do you have in your mind? What, you know, do you expect to drop 50 pounds next week? But then when you l- don't even lose a pound, you beat yourself up. Mm, I know weight loss is a thing and weight loss is a thing for me too. And I'm, I'm just honored. And I just realized the other day that I have held uh, one of my lowest weights I've ever been right now. I weigh 230. Well, actually I weigh today 228. I'm on three more pounds. I'm going to hit my epic goal that I've ever had. I mean, this has been a long train guys, ladies and gentlemen, when you probably saw me at the savvy landlord, 20, 12, I rolled out heavy D around 75, 275 in this last year and some change. I've lost like almost over 40 pounds. And a lot of people don't know this either. And I got photos. Somebody, a good friend of mine just sent me a photo of me, super heavy D. At one time I was over 300 pounds. And it, it has been a phenomenal journey and it has not been easy. It is a process. But what's your expectations for that? And, you know, I'm waiting for people to ask me how I did it. They used to ask me all the time and people stop asking me that because I realized, you know, I've been sustaining this weight for a long time, which I have some fear in that. And I was looking in the mirror today and I was like, man, how can I help more people in this area? And I realized it's the expectations in your mind. When someone asks me again about that or you know a lot of people ask me and they don't do nothing you know i want to be rich yeah okay buddy or yeah but they won't put the time in or they won't read the books or they won't put the effort in they just want to go to a seminar and act like they're gonna get rich but i'm telling you if you really want health and live the best life ever it's going to put some time in you're gonna you're gonna have to t- lice up those shoes and you're going to hit that pavement, even though it hurts. I mean, I know I love some of my homeboys out there that are sending me texts that they're running. And I'm just honored that they're part of my team and just encouraging me. And they're out there changing their life by running. But see, here's the deal. You got to go run. <laughs> you you got to go out and get you got to You got to sign up at the gym and you got to go. And even though, you know, you don't have the time. Yeah, I know you don't have the time. How much is it worth for you, for your spouse, for your children? And you can make a difference in someone's life by committing to it. Anyway, hopefully one of these seven points made an impact in your life. So let's do it one more time. Put it on paper, write it down, your vision, and make a visual element of it. Something graphical. Google it up like you want a beach house. Put that beach house Put it on paper, whatever it is, your vision of your company, how you're going to make money, how many units you're going to make. Put 20 little houses on a, on a piece of paper. I don't care, but put it on paper. Write it down. Put it in a book, a success book. 
consider number two, changing lanes. It's okay. It's okay that you don't have to be a real estate investor for the rest of your life. You can, you can be an accountant if you want to, or if you want to be, I don't know, a GC or run a construction company or own a HVAC company, or you can be blue collar, or you can be a white collar, or you can master probates, change lanes. It may not be working. Go to a new market, new territory, move, expand, try, change lanes. Three, ask for help. Seriously. You can ask me, I'll fire back at you with a response, but ask somebody, anybody, and then bring value to that person. If you're going to ask for a mentor, write it out, organize it, get to the bullet points and email that person. These are the things I'm good at. These are the things I'm, I need help with. And we talked about the last episode, human capital or human value. What can you bring to the table? Five, I got smashed because I did not have a clear path. If I'm leading people to sales, if I'm leading people in my organization, is it a clear path of understanding? Ooh, quote that. Is what you're doing having a clear path? And I think number one, having a visual element helps you. Number six, leverage like nobody's business. Get buck effing wild. I'm telling you, I don't even curse no more. I'm trying to. I do curse. If you know that, sorry, I didn't mean to fail you, but I'm going to let you know right now, leverage like nobody's business. I thought I was somebody with leveraging VAs and got 20 of those jokers running and all blah, 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 blah. But man, am I leveraging physical people in my environment to help me? Am I leveraging finances? Do I have debt equity? Am I leveraging technology? Do I have a CRM in place? Are you still screwing around with spreadsheets? Are you leveraging software to run your property management? Think about it. What are you leveraging and what can you be leveraging? And if you don't know how to leverage, reach out to your boy and maybe we can do a podcast. And then expectations in your mind, are they correct? Are they accurate? Are they beneficial benefic- beneficial for you? Anyway, this is your boy, Steve Van Kalmberg. I'm excited that you tuned in. Thanks for the two folks that text me that I don't even know who you are. I'm going to love on you and reply back to you. And uh, I got some good interviews coming in. I'm excited. If you have a a word or a vision or you have something that you want other investors to know about, let me know. I'd love to put you on the show. What is the Savvy Boot Camp? Are you struggling to get to the next level as a business owner, as an investor? Do you want to multiply your income? Sign up for the Savvy Boot Camp, a strategic and supercharged one night and one day event designed to shortcut your learning process and propel you forward. Just value, no upsells, and an intimate setting to build relationships with like-minded investors. We will be covering how personality profiling can make you a millionaire, outsourcing and the nitty gritty of maximizing your property management, scaling your business through systems and automation, technology hacks you should be using every day, and how to raise private money. Go to www.savvybootcamp.com now to register or to find out more. Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets.